One of the things that we've seen is how closely business teams and technology teams and data science teams really need to come together to operate as one organization in order to drive the transformation that is required and to ensure that the business runs at the speed of business, delivers for the customer the way the customer is required and demanded in today's marketplace. And without that integration between these teams, it just would not be possible to deliver on this. I have folks on stage with me today that are steeped in this, that understand it, that are driving this transformation from a technology perspective in their organizations and driving real results for their customers and a transformation not just in their own organizations but across the industry as a whole. Um, welcome to stage, Craig, Gustavo, Vishnu, and of course, Mike, our dear friend uh, from Forrester. Let's dive in. Craig, first of all, thank you for coming all the way from South Africa. Um, I, personally, I love South Africa. I think it's just a, such a magnificent country with such diversity and, and beauty. Uh, it, it's really quite remarkable. We've also had the good fortune at FICO to have been partnering with Woolworths for over three decades, as you reminded me yesterday, um, and uh, have, have really enjoyed uh, all our interactions. You've been a longtime user of FICO applications over a three decade span, and then you decided that you wanted to move away from those best-in-class and best-in-breed applications and move to FICO Platform. Why? Yeah, and thanks, first of all, for, for having me. Um, so yeah, it's been a 30-year 30, 30 relationship with FICO. We were traditionally um, sort of on the forefront of using those technologies in, in South Africa. Mm -hmm. um, at some point, we kind of lost our way a little bit uh, for many different reasons. Um, and then, you know, very soon we, we found ourselves as a, as a technology, um, you know, our technology was becoming a barrier for our uh, business transformation and culture transformation. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and then we sort of set out to, to go through a modernization journey. We prioritized our decisioning, data, uh, and some customer experience um, efforts, and, and, uh, and we developed a set of principles that we wanted to achieve. Mm -hmm. And at a high level, these were things like responsiveness. Um, we wanted to be innovative and we wanted to be future ready. Mm -hmm. And the FICO platform fit perfectly. We went into market, tested a number of things, and we landed on FICO platform. I think the, the other bit is, you know, like any long standing relationship, um, you know, someone like me that's getting into the second, close to third decade of my <laughs> marriage, the other thing that you, that you get is um, it allows us to have really robust, honest conversations mm -hmm. to, to get the best out of the partnership. Yes. Yeah, no, and, and I, I know that we value uh, that in every relationship we go into. Uh, we want these to be us as an extension of you and not as two separate organizations, and, um, and I think we, we prove that uh, can work and can work really, really well. Um, Craig, as I've looked at what you folks are doing, you know, it's pretty mind-boggling. Uh, it's one thing to go through a technical restructuring and, and a technical transformation process. It's a whole nother to layer on top of that a workforce transformation as well. Um, can you talk a little bit about, you know, um, that approach and what you had to go through and how FICO Platform is actually helping you drive a talent and workflow, workforce transformation in conjunction with the technical transformation? Yeah, we, I mean, we, we sort of looked at it across three aspects. Um, I, I think the most important one is, 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 is our culture, and I'll come back to that in a second. Um, then we looked at sort of how we organize ourselves, and we heard this week uh, the key theme around business composability, and, and that just sort of reinforced it for me mm -hmm. personally, and, and I'm sure my, my colleagues as well. And the third one was, was talent. Mm -hmm. um, and in, in our business culture, we, we made the decision to move from a pretty safe uh, culture to, to one that's sort of uh, more entrenched in learning and, and, and agility and such. And that is a program that is CEO-sponsored and, and, and leader-led. So, so we are in the throes of, of that. The second one around uh, organize, organ, how we organize ourselves is, is a little bit more tricky. Um, and we're probably going to have to work through that in a little bit, uh, you know, over a bit more time. Uh, in terms of talent, across three areas, really, um, 
One was we wanted to reskill some of our existing talent mm -hmm. so that we could retain um, some of the institutional IP and, and, and knowledge. Mm -hmm. Secondly, we worked with our partners to bring in fresh talent mm -hmm. uh, and experience and, and real muscle. Mm -hmm. And then the last one was uh, we've got an extensive um, uh, graduate program. And in South African context, it's, it's quite important for us to develop skills for our own market. Mm -hmm. Um, so our CRO sponsors uh, this program, and we focus on data analytics and, and technology, and it allows us to bring fresh young talent into into the business and and even for the market. You know, some of them move on to to other things, and 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 so we then contribute to the market. The platform and the technology allows us to express all of this, mm -hmm. and that's how it all all comes together. Mm -hmm. Fabulous. Thank you for sharing that, and I could not agree with you more. You know, our CEO, Will Lansing, is also crystal clear about his principles and tenets and, and ethos that drive our culture. And I see Siva sitting right there, your CEO, who I know uh, has a similar ethos uh, about him. And it really does require that clarity of mission and purpose and ethos to be able to deliver on this. I'm also sure that Siva came to you, Siva came to you and said, hey, I don't want just a technical transformation. I don't want just a talent and workforce transformation. I also want a cost transformation. Right, Siva? So tell me a little bit about how does FICO platform fit into that? Yeah. Um, he's come to me more than once. <laughs> but so as you, and, and you guys will know, as you go through a process like this, uh, falling into a cost layering trap is, is you know, it's easy to get into that because there's so many decisions you need to make. Um, mm -hmm. Um, you know, we went, we went and consulted some of our partners and we went to understand what an organization of our size that is future ready, mm -hmm. what, what should their technology estate cost, you know, to, to run. We then got that view, developed uh, some principles and, and incorporated that into, into our strategy. The, uh, in terms of the platform, there's, you know, some immediate opportunities that gets offered up. Um, the first around architectural simplification. There are a number of opportunities there. Secondly, around um, you know just technology consolidation. With platform, we we can retire four applications just off the bat. Wow. Um, and probably a couple a couple more if we if we do this appropriately. Yeah, that's um, clearly architectural simplicity and clarification, yeah. and and same on the on the number of applications. Yeah. yeah. Um, and and so and then lastly, in terms of our the opportunity to advance our cloud journey. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a number of tin can be can be retired and, and also uh, moving into cloud to get um, you know all the, the elasticity and scalability that we get with with that. I think the the last thing in terms of cost, it's not just about cost. It's it's about making sure that we appropriately value led. Mm -hmm. um, and so for issues of prioritization, um, you know, shareholder value, customer value. Uh, we created a customer value office. Uh, it actually sits in the CEO's office, and you know, we uh, it's it's at the heart of of how we make decisions and making sure that we make the right decisions mm -hmm. uh, to bring all of this together, so that it's not just about rand and cents, but but also, you know, paying the right cost for the right value. Mm -hmm. Craig, pretty remarkable. Thank you, uh, thank you for being here. Uh, love being on this journey with you guys, and look forward to many more to come. Gustavo, welcome back. It's so good to have you at FICO World and back on main stage um, uh, after a couple of years. Um, Gustavo, you know, you guys with PicPay are just on an absolute rocket ship. 20% uh, of Brazil's instant payments go through you guys and, and growing, and you're adding new products and capabilities as you go along. Um, talk to me a little bit about, uh, you know, your approach and what makes PicPay so special. Thank you, Nikhil. Glad to be back. Um... Brazil is a very complex country with a complex economy as well. And with time, we de develop a lot of uh, payments and credit card uh, rails that became, I mean, too complex for a lot of Brazilians to understand. Mm -hmm. uh, so our mission is to simplify this complexity uh, and on their daily basis of our customers. We have more than 35 million customers right now at the platform. Uh, so they are simplify their lives with frictionless payments, and regardless of what comes next, we are ready to adapt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fantastic. And we are grateful that you picked FICO Platform on this journey with you. Uh, what are you doing with FICO Platform? 
Yeah, we are doing all of our originations there, our credit maintenance there as well. Uh, we choose the FICO platform because we want to scale, we want to adapt all the things that we learned on the last three years. Uh, and especially because when you are growing, you don't know what you're going to face. You don't know what demand will, will come. So you have to scale as well, as fast as well. So FICO platform was a no-brainer for us. Yeah, fantastic. You've recently uh, you know, started to migrate credit cards to FICO platform. How's that going? It's going amazing. Um, the, the value of your migrating to the platform that you can have online data, more uh, accurate data. If you don't change at all your policies, you're going to have more results, better results. And we did with the platform. As well, we can, uh, when the customer is applying for a credit card, and I get online data, I can change my decision online. Mm -hmm. And again, for simplicity, uh, the customer doesn't even know that they offer changes, but yeah. I'm doing that in real time. So with that, we could approve 10% more of our customers on these uh, fly decisions. 10% higher yes. approval rates. Yes. That's pretty remarkable. Yeah, uh, pretty, pretty remarkable. Um, you know, Gustavo, a few months ago, uh, you really warmed my heart when you talked a little bit about how you are replacing a large uh, data software provider and moving to FICO platform. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, you know, what led to that? And, and I'm pretty sure what Craig talked about from an architectural simpli simplification process, a lot of that also drove your thought process there. Can you maybe speak to that a little bit? Yeah. Uh, from a technology perspective, nowadays you can build almost anything anywhere, right? Uh, with a lot of serverless stuff on AWS and all of that. So you can easily build a Python uh, um, engine or platform in-house, and you start small, and you say, see, it works. Yes. I don't need anything else. Uh, but with time, the complexity comes, and you are not able to adapt. So there is a lot of great software out there, but I believe, and PicPay believes, that you need to use the right tool for the right problem to solve, because uh, at the beginning, they are all almost matchable, mm -hmm. but with time, you're going to see that you, you won't scale. So we have some tools for infrastructure. We have some tools for data. But for decision, we choose the FICO platform, and we build our architecture around it. So the FICO platform is the heart of our credit decisions. Fantastic. Uh, love that. Uh, you know, look forward to many more uh, extensions uh, and love being at the heart of your uh, decisioning and intelligence process. Gustavo, thanks again for, for being here. You're welcome. Vishnu, welcome. Uh, you flew all the way out from Chennai and India yeah. to be with us uh, at FICO World. Much appreciate that. Um, you know, we've had uh, such a wonderful relationship with TCS, a multi-dimensional relationship with TCS. Um, and every time I think uh, I can't possibly meet more people from TCS, I realize, and you reminded me, that you have 600 and something thousand employees. Uh, that's the size of a country in most places. Um, We've spoken a lot at FICO World about putting the customer at the heart of what we do. And one of TCS's core tenants and principles is customer centricity. Um, can you maybe talk a little bit about, from your experience through many verticals and, and, and uh, industries that you've had access to, you know, what's really holding back companies and enterprises from doing this effectively? Nikhil, thanks for having me here. Uh, this is my first time at FICO World, and I'm thoroughly enjoying. Um, when we talk about customer centricity, I've, I've, I've been through the spectrum of transformation uh, from strategy to transformation to actual implementation. And what amazes me is every time, every single time we talk about customer centricity, everybody, but yet we have challenges. Mm -hmm. um, th congratulations for your uh, implementation of your platform in India. I come from India. Mm -hmm. And in India, we've got UPI, Unified Payment Interface, mm -hmm. uh, which is a digital wallet. Uh, you go out on the street, you want to buy vegetables from a vendor, you use UPI. We don't carry wallets, we carry cell phones. An implementation of that scale to the grassroots level of India, to the size of the Indian population. 10 billion plus transactions 10 billion plus transactions. Just to put that in perspective, that's 2 billion more than the world population, wow. just the number itself. Uh, to do that type of a digital transformation was unimaginable earlier. And uh, the challenges that generally enterprises face 
I'd call that in you know, three categories. Number one, leadership. There's a need for a well-rounded thought process and leadership that takes the finance, marketing, technology, the team along with you and implement it till the end. Mm -hmm. Business composability, something that we've been talking about throughout FICO world, is an amazing tool. I think composable architecture and thought processes is going to be the future. And that's what is going to take leadership forward. Mm -hmm. Number two, mindset. Somewhere along the line, we are uh, a little stuck with our archaic, uh, the legacy systems and our old habits. We need to shrug them off. When we think about transformation, we need to shrug them off and believe that we can transform. And the DNA of the leaders should be on the ground. And the developer on the ground should feel like a CEO. And that's when transformations happen. Number three and most important of all, keeping the human in the center. Mm. At the end of the day, uh, people are building it for people. Mm. So yesterday we had Abhijit from HDFC speak about uh, the transformation. Uh, and I'm a customer of HDFC back in India. Mm -hmm. So I, here I am, I'm a consumer. Mm -hmm. And I'm reaping the benefits and here I'm talking about the digital transformation. So uh, it, it comes a full circle. Mm -hmm. Keeping the human in the center by leveraging composable architecture mm -hmm. is gonna be the, uh, the reality of the future. And partners like us, FICO and TCS, can make it happen. Yeah, um, I, I love that. I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna borrow that from you and, and take that with me. Uh, composability, mindset, and keeping the human at the center. Yeah. Um, thanks, Vishnu. Um, you know, TCS has driven technology adoption on a global basis. Um, and, you know, we are incredibly excited to uh, having this partnership uh, with you folks. What excited you folks about a partnership with FICO? I think this is big. I'm, I'm very happy to uh, be partners with FICO here. I mean, uh, across business units, uh, be it banking, insurance, or telecom, we are doing a lot of work and the opportunities are just amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, I specialize in the travel, hospitality, and the transportation business. Mm -hmm. And uh, thinking about what we can do together uh, is just amazing. So let's, let me take an example. Mm -hmm. In two years' time, FIFA 2026 is coming up. Mm -hmm. And just think about the number of people who are gonna travel in, travel out, the number of hotel rooms and short-term rentals that are gonna be get booked, the number of cars and taxi hires that's gonna happen, and multiply that to the number of transactions that's gonna happen, and then the vulnerability that's gonna be involved in this entire process. Mm. We spoke about fraud. Mm. We saw Falcon Manager. Mm -hmm. So we've got a great opportunity as partners mm. to do a lot of things for people to enjoy their game mm. without fear, mm. without, any, uh, without falling prey for any uh, theft identity or fraud. Mm. Um, and that's what excites me. So what have we done and what we can do for everybody so that you and I can go to the stadium and watch those games and cheer our teams. Yeah, take the friction out of it, right? Take the friction out Make of it. Make it invisible uh, for the consumer. Uh, thank you, I, I love how you said that. Uh, Vishnu, you know, as you mentioned, I mean, you've gone through multiple industries, you, you have uh, access and experience in many of them. What would you leave uh, as, as some parting thoughts for our uh, folks here from financial services? No, I, I think we've spoken about it and I, I'll just reiterate what we've spoken about for, for the last couple of days. Data is at the center. So you've, just when we think that we've harnessed all the data and we've got them all in one data lake, um, then you start building use cases on top of it. You know that you don't have all the data with you. So data is gonna be really powerful. So the unique identifier of your organization is in the data and getting the data right is gonna be the first critical step. Uh, then whatever architecture, however we build our solutions, we need to build it for the customer. Uh, keeping our architecture customizable, and we spoke about business composability, these are gonna be amazing tools for you to bring the solutions to your customer at their footstep. And last but not the least, leverage platforms. I think uh, it's 10 years back, people were hesitating to use platforms. But today, everybody's embracing it. One simple reason that is, they want to focus on their core business of flying an aircraft or lending money to uh, people. So, and then leave the platform or the IT work to us. And we as partners and product organizations, we take it to the customers and the end consumers. Mm -hmm. Reinforce your superpowers. 
versus trying to develop new ones that you might not be Absolutely. good at. Absolutely. Yeah, I love that. Um, thanks for being here, Vishnu.